Most mailboxes do a good job of holding your mail, but they're not very good at protecting it. If you're not home, anyone can open your mailbox and take out checks or other important correspondence. So today, we're going to replace this mailbox with a postal vault. If you go on vacation, you don't have to have your mail service stopped. This one will hold up to about two weeks worth of mail for you. This has a trap door inside of it, and once it's released, all of the mail falls down to the bottom compartment and is protected while you're gone. We're going to build a brick exterior for our postal vault, but before we can do that, we need to dig out this area to pour a concrete base for the bricks to have something to sit on. Now I've already staked out the area according to the measurements we need for the base, and once that's done, take a shovel and mark the outside boundary of where you're going to dig. Once you have the area marked, dig down about four to six inches, because this is where we're going to pour the concrete. Now the reason that we're digging down this far is so that our base will sit down below curb level. That way the grass will grow up over the base and will look like our mailbox is just sitting in the yard. We've built our form out of two by fours according to the dimensions we need for the base. I've also nailed in stakes all the way around the outside of the form to hold it in place when we pour the concrete in. We're using fast drying fiber reinforced concrete and what that means is the concrete has pieces of fiber mixed into it to give the concrete its strength and by using this that will save us the step of having to put down a metal rebar. Once you have the form filled in with concrete, take a 2 by 4 and place it on top of the form and then slowly drag it towards the back of the form just like this. And what you're doing is smoothing out the concrete as you go. To finish smoothing out the concrete, take a trowel and lightly drag this across the top to get a nice, smooth, even surface. And once we're finished with this, we're going to let this dry overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and brick in our mailbox. This is day two of our project. A cold front has blown through in the meantime, but that's okay, we're going to continue anyway. Our concrete base is dried and we've removed the concrete forms. Now you can see that we have a fairly large base and that's good because that will allow us to position our postal vaults either as close together as we want them or as wide apart. Now the first thing that we're going to do is a layout with our bricks. Now the plan when you're doing a layout is to use as many full bricks as you can so that you don't have to make a lot of cuts. And remember, as you're laying your bricks down, be sure that you leave enough space in between each one for the mortar. Now when we get here to the corner, we do have an overhang, so we're going to have to make a cut right here, but that's okay because now we're only going to have to make a cut one time each row. Now for the front, again, the position of our postal vaults is important because what we want to do here is use one full brick and a piece. Now the reason that we want to do it this way is so that we can create a pattern. We're going to create a staggered effect as we move up and this will be more visually appealing than if we just used one row of bricks continuously like this all the way up. With our postal vaults in position, we determined that our back row of bricks is 36 inches across and we've placed two full bricks up each side. Now what we need to do is make sure that our sides are square with the back and also that all of the bricks are going to be centered on the pad. Now that our pad is marked, we're going to use these marks as our reference lines. We're using multi-purpose thin set mortar and a margin trowel. Both of these you can get at your local hardware store. With some on the back of your trowel, spread a thin layer across the top of your base, but be sure that you stay away from your reference marks about a quarter of an inch because you don't want to cover these up. The thin set will act as a bonding agent between the first set of bricks and the concrete slab. We are going to put mortar down on top of this and it's better to use too much mortar than too little because you can always wipe the excess away. 
Now I'm not putting any in the middle yet because this is where our postal boxes are going to sit. And we're just going to put this mortar all the way around like we've done with the thin set. When you're laying down your first row or course of bricks, remember again to leave space in between for your mortar. After your first course of bricks is down, you need to level them before you continue up. So you can set your level on the back row, and if that looks good, and set it on the back and the side to level these bricks as well. If it's not level, just take the rear end of your trowel and tamp down the bricks until it is. Now remember, once you have the basics down, it's the same steps, row after row. And you can see that we're about halfway through our project. Now let me show you something else that you may want to do. Take your framing square to make sure that you're keeping everything straight and square. See, that looks good there. And then something else that you're going to need to do is use a striker. Now see how this is curved right there? Put the curved edge in the mortar joint and strike it back and forth like this to get rid of the excess mortar. And what this is doing is putting a rake or an indentation in the joint to make it look better. Also make sure to do the vertical joints as well. And then you can turn the tool on its side to continue to scrape away the excess mortar. Our project is running a little long, but we have to get finished with this tonight. We've already cut our old mailboxes down. You can see that I'm placing the smaller pieces every other row, and this is the staggered effect that I was talking about. This is going to look really nice once we're finished. To finish our project, we're going to put a cap on the top of our postal box. But first, we need to span the gap between the two units, so to do that I'm going to use two pieces of thin metal. Now again, I'm going to use the multi-purpose thin set mortar on top of this so that our bricks will stick to the metal. Okay, we are finally finished with our project. As you can see, we added an overhang here on the cap, which really gives it a distinctive look. Now we spent about $300 for each of the postal vaults, plus we even added one for the neighbor. Not only does the mailbox look great, but now their mail will be secure.